Hey guys, welcome to our last unit for this class. In this unit, we have six chapters. We're going to cover chapters 15 through 20. And in each of these chapters, we're going to be applying the information we've been learning in the previous 14 chapters for this course. Each of these, top, each of these chapters covers slightly different material, um, but they all are applications of what we talked about before. Chapter 15 has three topics. We're going to talk about intracellular compartments and their evolution. We're going to talk about um, transport, and then we're going to talk about transport within the cell. And so in this first topic, we're going to focus on some organelles and their evolution, more than the mitochondria and chloroplasts that we've been talking about so far this semester. So as I just mentioned in our topic outline, we're going to talk about organelles that are involved in transport within the cell, as well as um, some of the other organelles too. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the evolution of these organelles. As always, here's our topic objectives. Please let me know if you have any questions about any of these so we can make sure we clear them up. As you notice, there's two evolutionary theories we have on the objectives list, so please let me know if you're having a hard time differentiating between the two of these. We've talked a lot about the endosymbiont theory. Now we're going to add the endomembrane theory to our list of understandings. So why do cells need organelles? We know that eukaryotic cells have a, a large amount of organelles in their, in their cells. We've talked about this in Chapter 1. And, what, and we've also, throughout the semester, have talked about tons of different activities that are occurring in these cells. And there's a lot more that we haven't even covered yet. And what is important about that is that we have to be able to keep all these events separate, because otherwise they could be interfering with each other intentionally or unintentionally. So that's why it's really important that we have these cross-purposes in separate organelles. And so we have a whole bunch of organelles that do a lot of different things. But as we've talked about so far, we have the chloroplasts and the mitochondria. Could you imagine what would be happening if we had photosynthesis and cellular respiration in a plant cell occurring in the same vicinity of each other, not within the mitochondria or the chloroplasts, and how muddy that could get really fast. All of these organelles develop through different processes of evolution, either the endosymbiont theory or the endomembrane theory, and we'll talk about both those here in a second. All right, so let's get started with talking about our organelles first. These are our membrane-bound organelles. We're going to talk about the types of organelles, we're going to talk through some of their functions, and then we'll wrap up with the evolution. This is the chart to learn. This chart goes over all of the organelles that we're going to talk about in this, um, in this topic. So make sure you understand these um, organelles. And as you can see, your, this chart gives you a little bit of a reference to other chapters where we've referenced them before. So make sure you have a good feel for them. Our first compartment we're going to talk about is the cytosol. Remember, the cytoplasm is referring to the jelly plus everything suspended in it. The cytosol is just the jelly that it suspends organelles and cytoskeleton. It's kind of what keeps everything together. And it serves as the site for a lot of metabolic processes. And it helps pass signals. So it's really this big messenger system. It allows for a lot of things to occur. It allows for transport to occur. The cytosol is a really important compartment within the cell. Without this, we wouldn't be able to as easily pass signals or um, transport items throughout the cell. Now the next one we've talked about is the membrane, or the nucleus. And we have two membranes in the nucleus, as we've talked about, and they have nuclear pores. So we know that that's how we get things in and out. We've talked about regulation through transcription to inhibit what goes through in and out of the nuclear pores. So it's really important that you recognize that that double membrane does play a role in that. And it's the most prominent structure, as you should know from looking at any light microscope, it's the organelle that you can see readily. And it contains the DNA of the cell. If you don't know that yet, um, come see me, because we really need to make sure you get that under your belt. The next organelle we're going to talk about is the endoplasmic reticulum, and this is connected to the nuclear membrane, and we call it the ER for short, and remember there's two types of ER. There's the rough ER, which has ribosomes on it, which is used for protein synthesis, and then we have the smooth ER, which is responsible for the metabolism of drugs and alcohol, as well as lipid synthesis, and this is where we get that membrane generation we talked about before. So it's really important that you understand that, and it's continuous with the nuclear membrane. So as RNA is leaving the nucleus, it can go straight into the endoplasmic reticulum. So make sure you understand that. Make sure you understand the two of these. We'll be revisiting the ER again in the next unit, or in the next chapter, because it's involved in cell communication. But make sure you understand where the role of this endoplasmic reticulum. The next one is our Golgi body, and it's located near the nucleus, but it is not located, it's not directly attached to the nucleus like the ER is, and it's not directly attached to the ER, it's actually separate. And it's, report, it's responsible for sorting, modifying, and shipping proteins. It's really like the UPS center, the post office of the cell. 
and it helps make sure that things get uh, proteins and other organ um, things that are being produced in the cell helps ensure they get to the right place. And so that's what's important about the Golgi is it helps get everything going. Now, it's really important to understand the Golgi has sidedness. It means that they have a cis side, which is what receives the vesicles, and the trans side, which releases the vesicles. And this is important because this is how things transfer through the Golgi. And we're gonna talk about this a lot more in a little bit, but I want you to make sure you understand that now, that there's a sidedness to it. All right, so our last three organelles we're gonna talk about are the somes, and I put them all in one slide because their names are so similar that it's really easy to get them mixed up, but they have very different functions, so it's really important you understand them and get them straight. The lysosome is responsible for the degradation of cellular material. This is if there's a broken um, mitochondria that needs to be cleaned up, or there's some proteins that need degraded, or something like that. The lysosome is kind of like the trash man of the cell. He comes along and he inspects things and gets rid of anything that's broken or damaged. Peroxisomes have a similar idea, but they're responsible for neutralizing toxins and breaking down lipids. This is different than just degrading proteins or something like that. So it's really important to understand the difference between the lysosome and the peroxisome. And the endosomes are, what they do is they sort material. Once the material is brought into the cell through endocytosis, the endosomes sort it and determine what needs to be sent to the lysosome, what needs to be sent to another place. That's the endosome. They're all small sacs. They all look similar, but they all have very different functions. So make sure you understand the differences between the three of these because they're, they're going to play a role later. And then, as we wrap this up, I know we didn't talk about the mitochondria or chloroplasts, but after the last chapter, I figure you've got a good handle on them. So if you need to refer back to chapter 13 and 14 to look at the mitochondria and the chloroplast structures, please do. But it's important to see on the see how all of these take up various parts of the cell. And as you know, we have one side is all one nucleus, one endoplasmic reticulum, one Golgi, but all these other ones, we have a ton of them within the cell. And it's important to understand how much space they take up um, based on that. So remember those somes, the peroxisome, lysosome, and the endosomes are really small, but we have a ton of them, but they still take up very little room in the cell compared to some of the other aspects or some of the other organelles we've talked about. So I don't expect you to memorize this chart, but I do want you to appreciate the differences between the different organelles. All right, so let's wrap up this topic by talking about the evolution of organelles. And I'm not gonna go through the endosymbiont theory. We've talked about it time and time again already in this class. So if you're still struggling with it, please let me know so we can go through that. But remember the endosymbiont theory is applied to the mitochondria and the chloroplasts because they have a double membrane and they have their own unique DNA. And those are the two, two of the cornerstones we use in this theory. We also have the endomembrane theory. And this is where we believe all the other organelles have generated from. Remember how I was talking about at the beginning of this topic, that organelles are important because they keep separate things separate from each other. And that's what we believe happened, is in the ancient prokaryotic cell, the DNA needed to be kept separate from membrane-bound ribosomes. And so what happened is there was an invagination of the plasma membrane. And what this did is it created a separation between that DNA and the ribosomes. And this process continued to grow into the endoplasmic reticulum and then into other organelles that we've seen that they're that we've just talked about. And so it's all about just keeping these processes separate. And that's how we believe that these other organelles have evolved from the ancient prokaryote to the ancient eukaryote to our, um, what we know today as our eukaryotic cells, the cells that make up you and me. So this is the end of this first topic. Please let me know if you have any questions about it and we will move on to the next topic when you're ready.